Yo, what's poppin', people? Your boy Snacks is back in the building with another banger. And you know how we do. Before we get started, go ahead and do your boy a solid and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to turn your post notification bell on so you'll know when your boy is going live or dropping this heat. And on three just dropped. And about an hour ago. It's what? I ain't got my watch on. 10:25 a.m. for me here in Texas, and I'm getting ready to go to Waco and look at some of these long faces of these Baylor fans because I got to go help my homeboy. But you ready to ride the Baker to to uh to Waco? That's where Baylor University is located. So we even ride out there. I might put my Colorado shirt on, you know, and do the damn thing. I got my Alabama on right now, but yeah. You know, Alabama was off this week. But on three just dropped. And I haven't watched it yet. So we're going to do this together. Hopefully, let's see if J.D. Bikel is starting to like Colorado again. Because, you know, they back and forth with the with the love. And it was a lot of hate last year because they just didn't like Prime and how he was doing it and how he was changing the game and everything that was going on. but. We finna find out today. Because you know, JB was walking, he was walking it back a little bit last week. You know, after that CSU game, he started walking himself back. Cause he had picked CSU to beat Colorado. Yeah. But it is what it is. Now we finna find out. Y'all ready to do this? Let's go. Well, we're going to find out what J.D. talking about. Y'all ready to do this thing? I am. Let's go. Just finding a way. At the buzzer, snagging a Hail Mary, taking it to OT, Travis Hunter forcing the fumble, game blouses. So what did we learn about Colorado last game night? I came blouses. on this very show on Tuesday morning and told y'all, hey, I think in week four, we start to figure out who teams are. We may not know who's winning the national championship, but we know the teams that are going to fold. In Colorado, man, they uh, they did not fold. Finally stretched the imagination, and they had a lot of opportunities to do so. So we'll talk about that right now. Make sure you are subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel, College Football. Nothing but college football on this show, The Hard Count. This is a show run by college football sickos for college football sickos. So if that's you, we appreciate y'all being subscribed. Also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter, at JD Piquel. Would love to hear y'all's thoughts on this game. So here's the... Come on, little fat jaw boy. Let's get to it. Wasting all our time trying to plug your Instagrams and Twitters and things of that nature. Yeah, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. You know, follow your boy. Everything down there at the bottom of the screen, you see it. And follow the Yash Network. Same thing. Let's go. The, the tricky part about talking about Colorado. If you say something critical of Colorado... You are a hater. You don't like Deion Sanders. You don't like Shadur Sanders. You have some agenda against Colorado that is not pertaining to what they do on the field. If you no. You can say critical things about Colorado. You're supposed to. We all do. Because they're not perfect in this football world. But when you start talking about things outside of football, that's when the hate comes in. It's not you talking about how bad they suck at the football because we understand that. We see that. But when you start adding all the other stuff on top of it, like the jewelry and the videos and thinking they too flashy and all that, that's when the hate comes in because that has nothing to do with football. That's their lifestyle. That's how they do it. That's prime. And y'all just hate prime. So y'all attach y'all hate from prime to Colorado and so whatever they do bad, it gives you a chance. Since you couldn't blast Prime while he was playing because he was that good. Now he's coaching. You're just trying to figure out a way to get at it. But let's go. If you say something positive about Colorado, you're overhyping them. You are a sheep. 
you're just buying into the deal and Sanders hype and you don't actually want to, you know, objectively look at what you're seeing on the field. So we're going to do our best here just to give you a, a straight shot as to what we saw yesterday. Final score, 38 to 30. See, he be trying to, he be trying to weasel his way back in there. If you do this, if you, no, just say what you're going to say. You can be objective. You can bash Colorado football all upside the head all you want to. Just don't pick at the players. Just don't pick at the coach. Just don't go into their personal life and start adding on top of it there. That's when we know you hate. Well, let's go. 31. Is Colorado winning the national championship? Really? That's a, could be. That's a flaming hot take there, Cotton. I don't know if I could buy into that, but is Colorado the same team they were last year? I came on this show a few weeks ago and said, hey, I don't see much difference here. I don't see much difference. Is Baylor a world beater? Probably not. You got to give Baylor some props, though. Baylor is a lot better than they were last year. Baylor has a lot of seniors on their team. So the cohesiveness of that team is a little bit better than most teams. Baylor's not where they want to be because they were 9-3 and three last year, but they're going to they gonna get better this year. They're going to be better than three wins. They might make a bowl game. But better is, Baylor is not the trash team that everybody thinks they were. Dave Aranda has put something together in Baylor in Waco, and that team is pretty good. The run defense is good because that's all they've been playing. They got a nice secondary, but we'll see because Colorado is probably the most pass prolific team that they'll play all season. So they'll be ready for other teams that come in there. So we'll see how Baylor flashes out. Baylor should be pretty damn good this season, but let's go. But to say that we saw this same uh, this same kind of mentality from Colorado a year ago, I think would be a stretch. Because to me, what we saw yesterday from Colorado, we'll talk about the, the dramatics at the end of the game in a second, but like the grit test that we saw from Colorado in this game. I know it's early in the year. I understand a lot of people have questions about how they'll finish the year. That's, you know, something that the end of the year is going to tell us. But there were multiple times where Colorado could have just hung it up, thrown in the towel, went down by two scores, 24-10. Baylor runs back a kick. They uh, have a quarterback run that puts them up two scores. And, like, there was a couple of times you could say, okay, it's Colorado now. They've already lost the game to Nebraska, starting to feel like Baylor's gaining momentum and they're gaining, you know, some – some physical leverage on Colorado. Like, is Colorado going to just say, all right, you know what, we're good? Never saw that. Never saw that. In fact, the opposite, I saw multiple times now in fourth and one scenarios where Colorado bowed up and found a way to get it done. They had a big uh, stop on fourth and one defensively, and then they also, granted it was towards the end of the game, but they found a way on fourth and one to get a first down to set up that Hail Mary. So Colorado now, is it a... Yeah, but they shouldn't have to find it. They had already got the first down. Forward progress had already put him in the first down. That was a bad spot by the refs that should have been stopped. Play should have been stopped. Clock should have been stopped to check to see where forward progress was stopped at. But they didn't. They just played on, which makes me think the ref had because there was a couple other calls in that game. But that's neither here nor there. Colorado was resilient last night. True. Colorado played the game the way everybody's been crying for them to play the game last night. They ran the ball. In fact, they ran the ball for over 40 times last night. They didn't reach over 100 yards because Shadour had eight sacks. If they wouldn't have had that, they would have had over 100 yards. But it is what it is. What we have to do is remember, last year, Colorado would have lost this game. This year, they found a way. They banded together as a team, as a crew, as a grip, as a posse, as a squad, as a band of brothers to figure out how to win this game. It was raining last night. They had a thousand excuses. They could have gave up a thousand times, but they didn't. 
They found a way to figure it out, kept their composure, and got the win. But let's get back. Uh, is it a finished product? I don't think so. I think, you know, if you're a Colorado fan, you're hoping they continue to trend upward and evolve. But, like, they showed a lot more balance. The key stat to me when assessing the success from Colorado last night, they won the time of possession. 36 minutes to 23 minutes over Baylor. That in itself speaks to the kind of game that Colorado played last night. They held the ball. They ran the ball. And they were not tempo. They didn't go tempo, tempo, tempo. They took their time. And did what they're supposed to do. If special teams would have held up last night, Colorado would have won that game by 21 points. Special teams kept them in their game last night. Because they would have took their soul and they wouldn't have had no bounce back. Baylor had bounce back because of special teams. And they you give a team hope. And that's what they had. They had hope. So they kept fighting. But anyway, let's go. Couple of notes here. Say what you want about Shadur Sanders. Okay. I mean, and everybody does say what they want about Shadur Sanders, right? Like he is a polarizing character. Uh, everyone's got an opinion. There is no one who is indifferent on Shadur Sanders. You either think that he is, um, you know, a little bit much. You think he's the best quarterback in college football. Like there is no in between. Say what you want about him. This dude just, I am so impressed with the way that he just takes a beating. Shadur is a baller, dog. And y'all are just not saying that because y'all see it because he was coming up from Jackson State. Whoop the freaking dude. Football is football. It's played the same way on all levels. What he did at Jackson, he can do on everywhere else. The man plays football to a high level. He is a very, very good quarterback. And most people just don't want to admit that. Because he's Dion's son. And I wish people would stop using that against him. He didn't pick that. That was given. But he's still good at what he does. Y'all using the fact that Dion's his father against him. And that's wrong. Just like these people in the Heisman Trophy. Bolton going to use that against him. And going to use it against Travis. But if Travis don't win the Heisman Trophy. Regardless of this record, and Travis plays all 12 games, something is wrong with college football. Because there's no way in hell you can tell me Travis Hunter is not the best player in college football full freaking stop. If you do, you're a liar. But anyway. Game in and game out. Was sacked eight times last night. Didn't matter. Every single time gets back up. Keeps on slinging. Stands in there, keeps on dealing. Stands in there and keeps on finding a way for his team to ultimately win this football game. The resilience that takes. And people talk a lot about Colorado having no substance and having them be a team that's all about playing for clicks and this, that, and the other. And like, say what you want about that. To get sacked eight times and hit in the mouth a bunch of other times and pressure a bunch of other times and to keep coming back for more and to keep competing, like, that tells you a lot about a guy. Oh, now y'all trying to figure out that he's the dude. He's that kind of quarterback. Because y'all were killing him. He getting sacked for this, for that. He's just getting hit. And he keeps getting up. And he keeps throwing the ball. And he keeps making the right play. And that's the biggest problem. Hey, y'all see that Colorado helmet on the, on the desk? Hey, next time, y'all just take the tag off of that, man before you sit it on your desk. You know, we don't want to know that you just bought it or just bought that face mask and screwed it on there. Take that freaking tag off of that, though. Listen. So you can have your opinions, but Shadur Sanders, the way that he was standing in there last night, to me, told me a lot about how much he actually wants to win, how much he loves football, and how gritty. But see, that's the point. He been standing in like that all last year. But he didn't want it. What in the hell y'all be watching? But never mind. I know what that is. That was the hate that was 
just spewing out of your face because you was hoping Coach Prime lose and you didn't want your dude to succeed because y'all didn't like the way Coach Prime entered the Power Five. Power Five. Y'all didn't like that. And now you're kind of getting used to it and you're starting to like it a little bit. But now you're saying if Coach Prime leave next year, college football is going to be boring again. Y'all don't want him to leave. But you want him to leave, but you don't want him to leave. He ain't going nowhere. Don't worry about it. Pretty this dude is. And I'll say this too. I think players on Colorado see that, follow that, buy into that, and play for Shadour Sanders because of that. Just my two cents from the outside looking in. I'll also add this. I just got to keep saying this because I'm worried that at a certain point in time, we'll just start taking it for granted. Travis Hunter's generational, dude. No shit. We've been telling y'all that. Travis Hunter's the best football player on the planet. He's generational. Like, if he doesn't end up in New York City, at least in that room as a Heisman Trophy finalist. No. Wrong. If he doesn't win the Heisman Trophy, if Travis don't play another snap, this year, he still would have been to play more snaps than any other player will play this season. And he just played four games. Four 100-yard games with picks, with forced fumbles, with tackles, with tackles for loss. No other player has those stats and will have them throughout the season. If Travis Hunter doesn't play another snap this year, he should win the Heisman Trophy. Everybody else should just stop. But we know them haters. He attached to Dion. He attached to Colorado. So, you know. Something is wrong with how we're assessing the Heisman Trophy, dude. Last night, seven receptions, 130 yards, forces a fumble on defense to ultimately win the game for Colorado. Like, come on, man. Like, enjoy this. You don't have to love Colorado. You don't need to buy a Travis Hunter jersey. But to not enjoy what he is right now in college football, we may never see another one of him ever again. I understand Charles Woodson is his own, is his own thing. Uh, Jabril Patton. Charles Woodson is not Travis Hunter. Champ Bailey is not Travis Hunter. Real Peppers is not Travis Hunter. Nobody is Travis Hunter. We are Four games in the season. Travis Hunter has played over 100 plus snaps every freaking game. He should have over 500 snaps already. The average player won't even barely play 300 snaps during the season. And he didn't double them up. Come on, dog. That's what I'm telling y'all. Regardless, if Travis don't play another snap this season, the Heisman Trophy should be locked up. Only thing that shouldn't be locked up is the Belitnikov and another award because he already going to win the Paul Horning Award. That's a given. That's his. Can't nobody else get that but Travis. He won it last year. Paul Horning Award, that's his. Now, Peppers was his own thing. Nobody is doing what Travis Hunter is doing. I don't think ever again. So again, you don't have to be all in on Colorado, but like, let's not be so ignorant than to just dismiss what Travis Hunter is doing right now. I'm laughing because it's legitimately comical. It is something we will not see, I don't think, ever if life. ever again, not for a long time. And they deserve a lot of credit if for you that. Do, They're going back to what... If you do see it again, you will see it in Colorado under Coach Prime. Because there is no other coach in college football that has the gall or the balls to do that. To trust the player to do that. If you see it again, it will be from Coach Prime. Not no other coach. What I said about the resiliency from Colorado, man. Down at the, at, you know, down for a lot of this game. Found a way to scratch and claw and fight their way back and put a drive together. A drive is a strong way to say it find a way to put themselves in position, have a chance to huck it right around midfield for a touchdown to, to tie the game, man. Like, again, that takes belief. 
that takes resilience, that takes grit. And that's kind of been the knock on Colorado, honestly. I think a lot of folks, myself included, have questioned like, all right, yeah, they got a lot of ability on the perimeter, but like, can they come back for more when they get punched in the mouth? This game, say what you want about Baylor and what they'll be the rest of the year, remains to be seen, but like to be down by two touchdowns, to find a way to push to OT, and to win on defense now, mind you, found a way to... Correct. They've done what they wouldn't have done last year. Being down 14 points, they found a way to push and get back in the game. Going back down again with less than two minutes left in the game, Shador has done it again. Drives the team down the field, throws the helmet, touchdown. Overtime, wins the game. Done it again. It's twice you have seen that. But yet and still, y'all still questioning his toughness, his accuracy. Still not saying that he is the best quarterback in college football when it's obvious that he is. Cam is number two. Then everybody else can get in wherever they fit in. But Shadur and Cam, not Cam Rising either. Cam Ward. Cam Rising is 58 and should not be playing college football. He should have been out of the league already, either in the NFL, at the CFL, UFL, or at home baking cookies with his wife and his 500 kids. That's where Cam Rising should be. Cam Rising is in his seventh season of college football. He's been here too long. If he ain't made it to the league yet, bruh, what does it say? And yet, they still got him touted as the one of the best quarterbacks in college football. Had him over Shadour. Why? I don't know. Y'all don't, y'all see what I'm seeing? Y'all watching what I'm watching? So how is that possible? Still got back. Still crying back. Carson Beck. Carson Beck. Wow. Queen you is still crying. Queen Wow. How? Because they are Deion's son. But Arch Manning is Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, nephew. And y'all falling all over yourself for Arch. Arch played one game, which was yesterday, played nobody. And y'all act like y'all was about to die because a Manning was on the field. But Shadur ain't right. Come on, dog. Defensively, make the play to win the football game at the end of the whole thing in overtime. Uh, again, everyone's going to have a take. There's going to be a lot of people that come in on this video saying, dude, you're overhyping Colorado. A lot of people that say you're a hater on Colorado for having some qualifying you're things you say before you say something about Colorado. But, like, at the end of the day, man, you found a way. Found a We know J.D. a hater, dog. He might not be a hater in this video. But we – Shown several videos of JD being a hater without without a doubt. But anyway, man, y'all see what it is. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to leave your comments down in the comment section. Join the member section. Y'all know what we do. We got another video coming out today. Around noon, one o'clock. It should be dropping. You know, make sure you're in the chat to check it out. If you ain't subscribed, who fault is that? Yours, you watching. You might as well hit the subscribe button so you'll know when I'm dropping this heat. But anyway, man, we gonna get out of here. It's Sunday. Got my Alabama shirt on. Gonna go watch some NFL. Take me a nap. Drink me a beer or two. Y'all be easy. I might drop another video today. I don't know. We'll see how it go. Anyway, man, we out of here. Peace.